Okay, in uh, this module, this is part two of bipartite networks and um, affiliations, we want to start by um, showing how to encode the graph that we just made. Okay, and just to refresh your memory, we want to encode this graph into the pagec.net format. And as it turns out, most of the things we've already talked about, right, we're going to have our vertices sections, our arcs and edges sections, and you'll start to see there's one difference, okay, where we give the total count of the vertices here, okay, and obviously there are seven vertices. There's a second number here. This second number tells us how many of the first seven vertices are the first type of node, okay, so you'll see that the second number is five, and vertices one through five represent people, okay, so basically we're telling Pajek how to, to, how to divide these vertices into two sets, the set of people and the set of clubs in this example. Okay, so one through seven represent all of the vertices, one through five represent the first class. Okay, uh, just a few other things to keep in mind to help us with the visualization. We've added some additional options to the node definition. So we're specifying a shape, right? We specified ellipse for people and box for clubs. And we've helped that along with some color. I see is the code for interior color, right? And we're setting people to the color red and clubs to the color green. After that, it's exactly the same, okay? We have, um, we usually model these as edges and um, where Alice participates in the karate club and Bob and Carl and Dave and then Carl, Dave, and Eve participate in the chess club. So if we've done everything right, we should be able to see these things in Pajek. If we pull it up, notice, Pajek will immediately recognize that it is a two-mode network, okay, and it'll, it'll label it as such. And just to get a quick view, we can draw it and see that, you know, we have roughly what we expect to see. Okay, um, but that's not it. There are some things that we can do with bipartite graphs um, that we will certainly want to do. Okay, so a few things just to walk through the menu again, just to get a sense of what's out there. Um, the first thing that we wanna see is we talked about in the previous video that it's possible for us to take this two mode network or bipartite network and convert it into two one mode networks, which is normally what we associate with a network, okay? So we can either take this network and break it down to show the relationships amongst the people, or we can break it down to show the relationships amongst the groups, okay? So let's start by taking this and breaking it into two different, two different one mode networks, okay? We can do it by row, in which case the row will demonstrate the, the relationships amongst the five people, right? And we can also do it by group. Okay, so we go back here, go to net, transform, right? and do the same thing by group. If we visualize these, okay, we'll get just the part of the relationships between the people. Okay, so we've basically said any two people who are in a club together are related. And you'll notice because Carl and Dave are in both clubs together, their line is actually a little bit larger. Okay, so it's showing that Carl and Dave are very closely affiliated because they're in two clubs, right? More than the other folks who are in there. So that's what the, if we just look at the people from this graph, this is what it would look like. And of course we can take a look at the other single one mode network from here. And we see that the chess and the karate clubs are connected because they have two members in common, uh, Carl and Dave. Okay, so that's sort of the basic, the type of basic things that you can do. Um, but of course, there are other things that you may wanna do other than just transform this network, right? So for example, um, we may want to create partitions, okay? And partitions will help us do a number of things. So if you just wanna create a partition for a two-mode network, 
Okay, it'll create the partition for you and just, just to look at it, you know, it'll break them into two categories. So we have a category for people and a category for clubs. This will give us some new visualization options. So if we go back to draw the graph again, right, notice it will automatically separate them by color. Okay, and this we wouldn't need to have put in, this will do it all by itself basically. And you'll notice that you get a whole new menu item here, okay? And we can actually start to arrange these things in a way that's sort of more appropriate for a bipartite graph. So let's start by configuring them in the Y direction. And notice we get something that's much, much easier to see. Now, with this simple example, because we created it by hand, we obviously could have done arranged this by hand. But with a larger graph, it's much handier just to be able to use the layers, layer in Y direction, and get a very nice um, layout, right like this. Okay, so two mode networks have some different types of operations associated with them. And all you need to do is make a partition and um, layer them appropriately, and you're all set. Uh, but that's not all. We have other things that we can do. Um, there are some types of things that affect bipartite graphs in particular. So for example, we can still calculate our degrees. We can calculate cores based on two mode networks. And there are some other things that we can do as well. So there, in addition to sort of visualization options, there are even some things that we can calculate, particularly for two mode networks. Okay. Um, we'll get practice with these things in class. This is just an introduction. But um, you'll see that bipartite graphs are very powerful and they're extremely useful when you want to analyze affiliations.